In this video, we're going to go over the basic structure uh, of a controlled experiment. Now, this is described in your lab manual on page four uh, in lab exercise one. And it's done, the explanation is done in the context of the experiment, one of the experiments that was run then. And you may or may not have done this in your, uh, in the first semester of biology, in your biology uh, one uh, semester. Uh, and there they were testing the effects of uh, different nutrients given to their test organism, yeast, and the yeast's ability to metabolize. And the yeast ended up generating carbon dioxide gas. So here they were testing how much carbon dioxide was produced as an indirect measure of how well the yeast was able to metabolize. But we're going to use the example I used in the last video on how to write a hypothesis, the case where you have corn plants growing in the field and then you discover that the soil levels were different for magnesium. And so you suspect magnesium was influencing the growth of the corn plants. So we're going to use that context, but the idea of how you design an experiment is the same. Uh, all of the components to an experiment are here within the body of the text, and they're in black bold lettered words. The idea of a treatment, your variables, the response variables, the test variable. Replications are important in having a control. So we're going to spend some time discussing this here uh, in terms of how you design a controlled experiment. So let's use a blank page to do a, a little bit of drawing here. And so the idea here is that we're going to have to identify uh, what variable you're going to be testing. And here you're going to be, that's your test variable in the context of the, of the corn uh, example. And the test variable here is going to be the magnesium. And it could be the level of magnesium, no magnesium, different concentrations of magnesium, um, and uh, then no magnesium for your control. And then you're going to have your response variable. And remember, your response variable is also called the dependent variable. Test variable, independent variable. So the response variable is what you measure to see if there's a response. So here's your response variable. And in this case, we're seeing if magnesium affects the growth, how robust the plants are, how green they are, something about their growth and development. It's very easy to measure growth. All you need is a ruler and just measure how tall the, the plants are getting uh, overall. So those are your two variables uh, that are important here. In, in order to adequately test if magnesium is having an influence and provide evidence to, for or against that idea, you're going to need to run a controlled experiment. And that means you're going to control every possible factor that can affect uh, the growth of those plants, and we're going to call those other factors constants because you want to keep them the same. Uh, so basically, you're going to be growing or trying to grow on corn, and you're going to need uh, groups because not all plants are going to be growing the same. So you're going to need uh, one group and another. And in the simplest case here, all you're going to do is you can uh, provide magnesium to the plants and then not provide magnesium. A more complex experiment would have several groups in which you're having uh, no magnesium and then um, um, uh, different levels of magnesium. So one group that is going to have, uh, you're going to identify that you're not going to manipulate. And let's say it's the normal case where you have normal soil uh, there. Uh, so you're just going to grow the plants based on that. And so that you're going to just, you're going to uh, grow the corn with a normal soil amount of magnesium that you believe is a normal level. And that would be, you can call that your control group. You could be opposite. You can starve it of magnesium and call that one your control. The point is the other group is going to have that variable manipulated here. So your other group is going to be your experimental group. Okay. So your group experimental, your experimental group. So uh, your control group and your experimental group. And uh, sometimes uh, this is going to be referred to as your treatment, to use the terminology. Your lamine, there's your control and there's your treatment. You can have different levels of that treatment. So you can do, I'll uh, say, different levels of uh, magnesium here. So, uh, And the reason they're going to be groups is because if you just experiment with one plant for each, uh, for the treatment and for the control, there's, there's variation in this. Not all plants are going to grow the same. So you need to be able to uh, 
uh, represent all of that possible variation. So you're going to need a group that has this experiment, groups that run these experiments more than once, several times. So running each experiment several times is called replicates or a replication. So uh, how many times we run each one uh, is uh, going to be a decision for the uh, scientists, for the experimenters. So this is the reason we're going to call them groups, right? So uh, let's say you're going to try to grow some corn plants. And as they begin to grow, you're going to measure their height. Uh, but you're going to want uh, a, a number of replicates. So in one group, you're going to, uh, you're going to have a number of replicates. And uh, 30 is a nice round number, but uh, in um, when it comes to time and, and just going through this process, I'm going to recommend no more than 10 when you design your experiment. So you're going to have 10 replicates, and you're going to grow uh, 10 plants, or have to measure 10 plants that are exposed to the conditions for the control. And then you're going to have 10 for your experimental. So each group is going to have the experiment repeated 10 times, right? So uh, here... Uh, magnesium. Here, let's just say normal, whatever that value is. And then here, no magnesium. That's the manipulation. You're going to try to grow the corn uh, in conditions with no magnesium. Uh, and that's the change. And that kind of matches in the field, right? In the field, there was lower levels of magnesium. So you want to just see, does actually having magnesium even have some kind of influence? So some level of magnesium, no magnesium here. So you're going to basically be trying to grow 10 plants with no magnesium, and that's your experimental group. And then your control group, uh, the replicates, uh, 10 replicates is there as well, and that's going to be the normal level of magnesium. Now you're going to start their growth. You're going to expose them. Uh, all of the ones in this group, you're going to expose them to normal magnesium, and here, uh, no magnesium for your treatment or your experimental group. When you're, when you're done, what you're going to do is you're going to measure the growth, the response variable. So that growth might be the height of the plant after so many days or so many uh, uh, weeks or uh, maybe as the seeding is growing in so many hours um, overall. And again, your test variable is your magnesium. So this is this right here, your magnesium level would be your independent variable. And uh, it shows you the levels of exposure to that. Now, uh, when you're done, you're going to end up with 10 values for your control group. Uh, and you're going to end up with 10 values for your experimental group. And it's kind of hard to compare them on a one-by-one -one basis. So the best way to do this is to compare the averages. So uh, when the experiment is done... A good thing to compare would be to compare the mean. So when the experiment is over, you're going to compare the averages, which is also called a mean. So you're going to compare the means between the two groups and see if there's a difference. Uh, and you're actually expecting to see that uh, with no magnesium, you're going to expect to see lower growth. But remember, your null hypothesis that we talked about in the prior video is assuming no difference. So when we're comparing the means, we're going to say that we're going to test the null hypothesis that the means are not different. The alternate would be that they are different. And you're actually expecting in this one, based on the, the example uh, from the prior video, that the one without magnesium would probably be growing less. That would be a more, a, uh, more specific expectation for the alternate hypothesis. So this is that basic uh, design here. Now, what's a key thing that hasn't been um, mentioned yet? And that's the idea of constants. What's constants? Constants are all of the other factors that can possibly affect this. So if you are going to be testing corn, you want to make sure you're testing the same variety of corn. You don't want to be testing different varieties of corn because different varieties grown from seed uh, may grow at different rates. Okay, Field corn may grow different than sweet corn. Uh, so you need to make sure you're using the same species, same type of seeds when you're doing this experiment. You need to be giving them the same amount of water, exposing them to the same amount of light. Uh, all of the things that could possibly vary, you want to make sure you keep those constant. The only thing that should be changed 
is your independent variable, and in this case, magnesium. And that's why it's called a controlled experiment, because you're reducing all the possible compl complications that could occur in the field. When you're in the field, and those field observations were made from those corn plants, which was the uh, inspiration for doing this experiment in the laboratory, was you noted that there was lower soil magnesium, but you really couldn't control all the possible variables. What if uh, one soil held water better than the other one? Um, um, or some other variable that you just can't control out in the field. So this is the idea of a controlled experiment to provide better evidence for or against the, the fact that magnesium might be influencing the growth. Remember, you cannot prove your hypothesis. So this is the basic design are the components of an experiment. And if you went back here, we covered those terms you see in black bold uh, lettered words, the response variable, uh, you have your test variable, and uh, the other names for them, the response also called the dependent variable. The test variable is called the independent variable. Um, your treatment is the level of the test variable, your independent variable, uh, which that's indicated uh, right there. Uh, that sometimes is called your treatment, uh, and then your response, that's your dependent variable. Uh, here, in this case, growth for the, the corn plant experiment, and the test variable is magnesium level. Uh, you have a control group, and we need replicates, and the reason for replicates is so that we can make sure we consider the possible variation that occurs in the corn plant itself. Okay, So that's your basic uh, controlled experiment, and you're going to be asked to do uh, design and run your own controlled experiment as part of your grade for this course.